Welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we have returned. The drunken debauchery that followed the one-year anniversary has passed, and we have returned for one year and one week. Episode 50. <laughs> none, none of this happened. No. <laughs> there was no drunken debauchery. I, no. The most we did was we here and clink glasses or something and clink, clink glasses and play video games. Play video games. <laughs> That's our idea of wild drunken debauchery right there, folks. <laughs> We're not very entertaining, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, but on that note, yes, we are back, and it's kind of weird because. Yeah. Like, when we hit 52, it's like, we're done! We did it! Exactly. And then it's like, oh, wait, we got to do an episode next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it really does feel like we reached a milestone and a goal. And but it then, is a milestone, not uh, a goal. Yeah, goal, well, yeah. <laughs> so. And, of course, we're continuing this week, and we're kicking in the new season, I guess, season two. Yeah. Of Weekly, in a way. We're kicking off with a bang as we talk about parking. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. I know how to pick these topics, don't I? And yes, I did pick this topic. I am owning the idea of this episode, for better or worse, because this was my stupid idea. Yeah. Uh, based upon something we will discuss in a minute that happened earlier this weekend that made me really want to talk about this for an hour. I lead a very sad life. Yeah, I wanted to talk about, you know, Krampus, Krampus and but Christmas horror we're stories. We're doing that but... next time, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about Haunt Weekly. It's like, oh yeah, we can just bump that to next week. It's no problem. Yeah, but this was on your mind. This was on my mind. So we'll I do wanted this. to get it out. And, you, we'll, and this gives us more time to research the Krampus episode anyway. So it kind of works out. Mm -hmm. Only we can really knock that one out of the park. But yes, we have also got some news this week. A couple news items we're going to go over after the conference reminder. Super brief. We're going to cover them in more detail in the news episode. But these are both important enough that we wanted to say something now and right. not just wait a, damn near a month yeah. to get them out there. So bear in mind that is a thing too. But first, as is tradition here on the podcast, conference reminder. Yay! So I'll kick it off this week. I think you did it last. I don't honestly remember. <laughs> I'm it pretty sure really someone matter. out there is keeping a spreadsheet of this. Let me know. <laughs> but yes, um, our first conference reminder, it's the Halloween and Party Expo here in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's January 14th through 17th here at the Convention Center. There are over 350 vendors in attendance. It does require business verification, but it is stupid easy to do it. I believe it's like a five-question form on their website at HalloweenPartyExpo.com. And if you are going to this or just otherwise attending, new, visiting New Orleans for some reason, let us know. Uh, yeah. We would love to hear from you. Um, yeah. We are on Twitter at Haunt Weekly, at Facebook at Haunt Weekly. Send us a message, drop us a line, and we'll see if we can find a way to get together and meet up. Yeah. Make it happen. As you noted um, before we got on the podcast, um, that is also the time my parents are in town. Right. So the meetup might have to be fudged a little bit, but we will work something out, I promise. My parents are old. They go to bed early. <laughs> You're... <sighs> I hope they're listening. <laughs> so that you can get a Sorry, job. Mom. <laughs> anyway. All right. Next, we have the Corn Party, January 17th through 20th. Multiple locations in Hawaii for operators of corn mazes. And you can find more information at themaze, M A I Z E dot com. Corn Party, the only. Uh, the only conference on our reminder list, you have to be very careful when you say the name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And later in January the 26th or the 30th, you have HauntCon. It's in Nashville, Tennessee, the Sheraton Nashville Airport. They also have tours of the Haunted Hell, Nashville, Nashville Nightmare, and Slaughterhouse. Learn more at HauntCon.com. Okay. And then we have... Trans March World. 23rd through 26th, we have Trans World's Halloween and Attraction Show. It's in St. Louis, Missouri. The America Center early bird discounts are pretty much until the day of. Yes. So, um, so, so save a few bucks and um, buy yeah. sometime soon. 
uh, new this year is an escape room city, a zone all about escape rooms, and you can find out more information at the Ha Show, H A A S H O W dot com. And interestingly enough, they actually did just post the map of vendors for Transworld. Ah. And Escape Room City looks like it takes up about a quarter of the trade show floor. Hmm. So if we were interested in trade shows and, and escape rooms and yes. trade, if you're interested in trade shows, absolutely. But if you're interested in escape rooms, and you're going to be there, and you're going to be there, check it out. And speaking of interest in escape rooms, on May 1st through 5th is the Escape Room Conference and Tour in Niagara Falls, New York. It's at the Niagara Falls Conference and Event Center. They'll have the tour of the Five Wits Escape Games Canada and Locked Up Escape Games. The conference is on the 1st through the 3rd. The tours are the 4th and the 5th. And you can learn more at roomescapeshow.com. Bear in mind, if you are going to this and you are going on all the tours, get your passport or your passport card. You will be crossing national boundaries. Right. Well, Cross those lines. Well, one national boundary, realistically. Yeah. But you'll probably cross it multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> your grammar was fine. Okay. All right. Next, May 12th through the 14th, we have West Coast Haunters Convention in Portland, Oregon at the Doubletree. Tour of Our to Midnight Room Escape, Labyrinth Room Escape, and Escapism Room Escape. That's a lot of escape rooms. That is a lot of room escapes. <laughs> Hauntersconvention.com for more information. Uh, so that's now three so far in the list that have a lot of focus on escape rooms. Yeah, it seems to be a growing trend, if you will. And the, I, I like the fact that the, they're having more conferences. It's a way for the room escapers to escape yes. and, and go to a conference. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a good thing. Um, after that, though, is the West Coast Haunters Convention, May 12th through 14th, in Portland, Oregon, the Doubletree Hotel. They will have tours of our... Wait, I just did that one, didn't I? I did that one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anyways, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I scrolled to the wrong point. All right, then next is the Midwest Honors Convention, yes. which it's easy to see why, now that I look at the list, how that happened. That's yes. June 8th through 11th, instead of in May. It's in Columbus, Ohio, the greatest Columbus center. They'll be touring the Scaratorium, other tours, too, t other, other tours TBA. Um, you can learn more at MidwestHauntersConvention.com. All right, you got it? Thanks, so goddamn. All right, August 4th through the 5th, it's Haunt Fair at Rankin Coma. New York at the Clarion Hotel, haunted bus tour on Friday. Remember, that's a bus that goes around to haunted places, not a haunted bus that goes to haunted places. Yes. And it's Haunt Fair, H A U N T dash F A I R E dot com for more information. Yes. And then the final one on our list, praying I scroll to the right position in our notes this time. Yes. <laughs> It's Halloween and Haunt Fest Show, August 25th through the 27th. It's in Dallas, Fort Worth, in the Mesquite Convention Center. You can attend the escape room trip to Jason vs. Tater and a, the Walking Dead Zombie. It's That's literally what it says on the site. I, I've got nothing else to give you. I, I know. We still haven't really figured, figured that out. out. Yeah. Maybe we need to go back to that one. But it's a more. you can learn more about this. Maybe figure it out for yourself at HalloweenandHaunt.com. All right, so some quick news items before we jump into the wild, wild world of parking. Yay! I um, need a crash sound effect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's too bad we don't do any post work on this podcast. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get, folks. I hate to say it. Yeah, <laughs> I think they can tell. <laughs> not a lot of editing goes into this one. Not a lot of editing. Just telling you. Anyways, um... But yes, uh, two pieces of news. The first one is an uplifting piece of news, even if it's in the midst of great tragedy. Um, the mysterious mansion in Gatlinburg is spared. Yes. Now, as most of us probably are already aware, there have been severe forest fires in the Gatlinburg area, and they really closely threatened the mysterious mansion. And that is a year-round haunt that is celebrating 36 years. I, I don't know the numbers, but that's got to make it one of the oldest ongoing haunted yeah. attraction oh, ongoing not year round yeah. or seasonal ongoing haunted attractions in this country yeah <clears throat> there were reports on Facebook including on Mysterious Mansion's own page right that it was destroyed in the fires right and indeed if you look at the fire maps and where the Mysterious Mansion sits it seemed almost definite that it was right it was these were not just goofball reports and I'll say this as two people who lived through Hurricane Katrina yeah. We were not in the city at the time. We were outside of it, but we had houses here and friends here. Right. 
Um, we know how this type of stuff happens, and don't think twice about it. It's, oh no! It the information <laughs> that oh, comes the information out of flow sucks. Out yeah, of the disaster zone. Yeah, yeah. It's it's terrible, and it, there's it, a lot of misinformation. Yeah, we heard a lot of wrong things about our house and our neighborhood too. So it, I completely understand that. Yeah. Um, yes, but the mansion still does stand. Yes. And thanks in large part, and they actually, what you should really do, and I'll post a link to it in the show notes. Right. Um, th- they have a video of an, their huh, of their jury rig sprinkler system. Yeah. I was going to say impromptu sprinkler system they set up. Yeah. Uh, which seemed to do really well. Yeah. I'm very impressed with it. And the, the video, they take a tour around the outside of the building, basically. Right. And they show that, like, the building itself is untouched, the porch around it is untouched. And the vegetation, like, six feet away from it is untouched. Right. But past that, total devastation. Yeah. Yeah, they ran the sprinklers for four hours, it said. Yeah, and it worked. Whatever they did, it worked. I'm impressed. They did suffer wind damage. It's one thing people don't really think about with forest fires. Right. Is there is very, very high winds surrounding those. Mm -hmm. And so they did suffer some wind damage. But other than that, they are fine. But still, our heart, thoughts, prayers, anything else you want to send go out to the others who did lose either their life or their property in those forest fires. I've right. been seeing photos of the beautiful resorts and buildings and places that were destroyed, and it's truly heartbreaking. Yes. Um, and if you want to send physical items, yes. they are asking for donations. They're favoring Dollywood Foundation. Yeah. They have, um, a, they have a list of items that people need on their Facebook page. Right. And a place to send those. And if you want to send money, they're encouraging you to participate with the Dollywood Foundation, saying that is truly local and right. keeping it, you know, yeah. in town, so to speak. Yeah, some of the, the items they're asking for are things like diapers, um, pet food, uh, handy wipes, <laughs> sanitation wipes, yeah. stuff like that. Stuff so. you might not think of donating. Yeah. But you might actually have an abundance. <laughs> or it can get relatively easily. Cheaply and easily, yes. Yeah. Now, the second bit of news is the tr- more tragic in nature. Mm-hmm. Um, Scott Dombrowski, um, haunter at Raven Haven, a well-known um, home haunt in the New York area, in New York, mm-hmm. um, died in a fire. Yeah. Uh, he was a rest- reptile rescuer on top of being a haunter. And his home caught fire. He ran inside to rescue his family's pets and other animals he had. He was overcome, collapsed in the fire, and was taken out with severe burns. Right. But ended up passing away three days later. Yes. Um, The family has set up a GoFundMe Mm -hmm. to support the family and so forth. And, you know, it's just heartbreaking to hear about this happening. But I got to say, these two stories combined really do show the best of the haunt community in a way. Our courage, our desire to do good in the world. Yeah. And even in times of tragedy, how we come together and fight for our neighbors and fight for our brothers and sisters. Right. So, yeah, this was a rough one, and I'm very, very sad. My heart goes out to the family. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he definitely seems to have represented the absolute best of the haunt community in every way. So, yep. anyways... <clears throat> that bit of sadness out of the way, let's get into parking. Okay. And specifically, I want to set it up with the reason we had, I wanted to talk about this. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and Crystal yeah. knows the reason, that's why she's rolling her eyes and oh, godding already. Um, every year, right around this time, or a little bit before this time, actually, right, right around Halloween, actually, we start seeing them. Yeah, right after. Yeah. Right after Halloween. We see these snipe signs all over the place for this big craft fair in Covington. And for those who don't know the geography, that's about an hour away. Yeah, it's it's north across the causeway. Yeah. It's just the longest bridge. In the world, literally. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can actually run a marathon one direction on this bridge. Yes. They, um, <laughs> they advertise it as the biggest craft show in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I, I saw the flyer today again, the little sign, yeah. rather. Yeah. Um, uh, with 500 vendors, and it's not that far, and I grew up in a crafter yeah. home, well, so I've always been to craft shows, and I was curious. And I'm not admittedly a craft show dude, Yeah, but I usually can find, I mean, craft shows have a lot in common with festivals and fairs and things. Oh, yeah. Similar food, sometimes same vendors. Right. And so I can usually find something to entertain myself, and yeah. plus... Being haunters, we're all kind of crafters in our own way. Yeah, we are. And, you know, you can find some unique stuff 
that's yeah. handmade most of the time. And I've always got an eye for that special item that, you know, might work well in the haunt. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and oh. Rap fairs can be great places to pick them up. They can. Especially if you can get them, like, on one of the sale units. Right. So, just something to think about, actually. Um, and then, by the way, it was the uh, Steinhauer Productions Christmas Extravaganza. I love that title. I just have to throw that title for this event out there. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyways... We drive the hour, literal hour, one way to get right. out there. And like she said, 30 minutes of it across a big, long bridge. Yep. We get out there, and parking was an unequivocal disaster. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> there were... Basically, they had it at okay. the fairgrounds. Yes, they had it at the, the coming to fairgrounds. Go ahead. You were, you were about um, to take it away. <laughs> I, I was. Go take it away, then. I, I was driving. So... <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 telling the truth, folks. She's telling... So uh, I pull into the second place that you're supposed to pull in because we completely missed the first place. Well, yeah, we pull in, and then the first <laughs> thing we have to do is a lap around the whole damn fairgrounds. Yeah, because there's no signage saying where to go. Well, okay, so whenever we first pulled in, we were <coughs> oh, behind a truck. Oh, that's what you're oh yeah, okay. And the truck went to the right, mm -hmm. so there was a way to go a little bit back to the left where more cars were, and a dude. Or you could follow his truck around the right. So we followed the truck, thinking he must know a secret. He didn't. Or at least, you know, have some idea where to go. And that's also right. kind of the instinct, too, is you always turn right when you go into stores. You turn right when going yeah. through. You know, so turning right is kind of the instinct anyway. It is. And so we turned right instead of going back to the left. And as you already noted, that meant we had to drive all the way around the outside. The parking was pretty much in the middle um, of a field with a trench around the outside so that you couldn't just drive into I it. I guess that was to uh, improve its defense capabilities should a World War One army attack it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and had... it was a drainage trench, I know, but still. I've got World War One on the brain. I don't know that because it was a circle that made it an island. <laughs> um, so... Then, uh, and yeah, with string around the outside, too. So, just so you know not to drive through their little... They have flags on the string, show. I know. <laughs> I <Anyways>. know. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So, yeah, we go all the way around, and then we get to a sign that says exit. <laughs> and there's a lady there, and she says, are you looking for parking, or are you trying to exit? And this is the first person that has talked to us since we paid and to by get the, it. This, this juncture, I think we've been in the lot eight minutes. At least. Yeah. That's yeah. a conservative estimate, eight minutes. Yeah. Um, and I say parking. She says, go straight, and if you find anything, take it. <laughs> and that's the glorious directions we got. <laughs> yeah. So we went straight, and there wasn't anything. So then we wound up going all the way back around, getting into the long line of cars to get into the main parking area. Which, hallelujah, we're entering the correct area now. Yes. So now we're in the right area. And we go down one aisle, and we go... T and there was nothing, and there were no people directing you where to go. So we go to the next aisle. And as I'm going up it, I notice all the spaces are facing the wrong way, and there's a car headed my direction. Yeah. All of the lines in the parking lot went the same way. Yes. So if you <laughs> if you wanted to do it completely legally and you did not have any spaces on the road you gambled on and right. lost, you would have to once again exit the lot, drive all the way around, yeah. <laughs> and then come back in the line and try again. Yes. <laughs> I got lucky because there was a lady who thought somebody was leaving and was stopped to let them out. So I just did a three-point turn in the yeah. the aisle to get out of that mess. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. But basically, there were too few spaces. Yeah. The lot was over full. There were too few attendants. There's almost no one there. No. It was heavily disorganized. As you noted, all the lanes went the same way. Right. And that made it pretty much impossible if you didn't find a space on the one row you tried to, to get back around to something else. There right. was next to no signage. Right. And what little signage they had lied. Yeah. Um, and basically, the, the end result of it was it was a confusing mess. And it took us, I think, at least 20 minutes to park 
a distance we could have walked in under two. Yeah. Like, from the time we entered the gate of the fairgrounds to where we parked, was at least, it was probably just a two minute walk. Yeah, if they would have let me park over there, I would have just parked there and walked. Mm-hmm. And not dealt with any of that headache. And the result of this was we went into the actual craft show in a bad mood. Yeah. And, and the bathroom incident afterward didn't help. Oh, God. <laughs> I should send you the picture to post of the ladies' restroom. Because <laughs> yes. um. you walk inside of a barn, <laughs> and there's, there's half walls <laughs> that divide the men's and the the women's. And they actually used panel-based construction. I recognize they, it immediately. They did. They I did. recognize it immediately. Yes. I don't know if that's good for a bathroom. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so I walk in... And there's one stall, and then there's a toilet in the middle of the walkway. <laughs> it's anyways. Like, this is after getting around a tractor. No, oh, yes. We've got uh, a, a, a tractor. huge tractor in order to get in. Yeah. It there's was... <laughs> a lot of sentences in this that should never be uttered and all. And there was history. a sign that said restrooms on the outside. I swear to God. And I didn't see any others. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the result of this, though, is that we went into it with a bad mood. Right. We spent less money. Than yep. we intended. We took out a pretty good amount of money. Yeah. We spent only the tiniest fraction of it. Basically what to get in and a, a little bit of food. food. I think that was it. We we bought a couple of things, but... Yeah, I bought one thing. There was like... We had plans to spend a, a very good amount of money. Yeah. And really didn't. We walked out with only a couple of items. And yeah. we're not going back to this. No. My mm. curiosity has been quenched. I have no idea why they call it a craft show. Because it's not... Yeah, there's there's a lot else wrong with the event to be yeah. clear, but the parking set the tone and yeah. it did nothing to redeem itself basically. Right, and that's a problem because you know I I realized as we were peeling off and then got lost on the way out of the goddamn parking lot. <sighs> Because, once again, their sign said exit, so we went up to a table that had exit on it. And she told me that that wasn't the exit. <laughs> I'm so, she's not kidding. And there folks. were four cars behind me that all thought that that was the exit, too. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not the only idiot here. Okay? Yeah. Yes, but the, the point is, we realized I realized at that point I'd had similar experiences with a lot of pawns. Right. In fact, I realized that the only time, other than apparently mediocre craft shows and the North Shore, that we deal with this type of parking cluster ductum um, yes. is when we're going to haunted attractions. Well, and events in general. Events yeah. in general, but haunted attractions Festivals. are probably the most common events we go to. Yeah. So it, it seemed like this was a good time to talk about parking in general, especially considering that a lot of haunts this time of year, if they're either leases are up or they right. don't have a permanent location, are probably trying to figure out where they're going to open next year. Right. And parking something you've got to consider mm. in that. I know it's something that we've <laughs> passed on opportunities because yeah. there was just not any parking yeah, we've for anybody. We've offered buildings to open it before. Yeah. Been at least offered proposals for it. Yeah. And turned it down because parking was completely inadequate. Yeah. And here's the problem with parking. And then the reason why you have to think about it now um, nearly all haunt attendees drive to the location. Right. I'm pretty sure, I don't know the exact numbers, I didn't look it up, but if that number is not like 99 point something, yeah. I will be damn surprised. Yeah, the uh, the exception to that may be the mortuary, just because it's on the streetcar line. I'm, I'm Okay, maybe. You might have something there, but in general, across the industry... Oh, yeah. If it's not 99 point something, I'm going to be oh, damned yeah. One haunted house doesn't, you know, no. take that percentage <laughs> no, down no, no, much. No. <laughs> and even then, most people drive to the mortuary. Yeah, they do. Because the streetcar line is really flipping limited in this city. Yeah. Streetcar and bus it's line... It's getting better. It's getting better, yes. But streetcar and bus lines are limited in this city. Right. Um. So, something to think about there. But, yeah... Nearly everyone who goes to a haunted attraction drives, mo- partly because haunts tend to be in locations that are away from public transit. People can't walk to them. Um, right. But also because it's just kind of how you get your group to go to a place. Yeah, and a lot of times they'll be out of the way, you know? Yeah. They're they they're not in downtown areas a lot. And here's the thing. like Sometimes they are. We're, we're, we're home haunters right now. We probably have one of the easiest haunts for people to walk to. Yeah. We're in the middle of a neighborhood 
full of our target market. Yeah. And yet we still have probably over 95% of people walk. Who come, yeah. Who come here drive. Yeah. At least 95%, probably higher than that. Yeah. We, so, have, we have people directing parking on the street. Yeah. We actually do. This is true. We have a, on Halloween night, our busiest night, we have one to two crew members whose duty, in addition to being costume characters, is to direct parking. Yep. And to make sure people don't block driveways, make sure people aren't blocking the road, keep people out of the damned road so they don't stand and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, we actually have that. Um, so, yeah, this is true of pretty much all haunts. And the problem is, basically, parking takes space. Yes. And here's the thing. I actually researched this some before, this po- before the podcast. Um, I wanted to answer a simple question. Yeah. How many cars can you put on an acre of land? Right. Turns out I stepped into an internet war. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what I was jumping into with that. Gotcha. That's, that's like when them rabbit hole questions were like, PhDs get into flame wars. <laughs> it's like, whoa, there's like way too many theses on this. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. This is something that is talked about way too goddamn much by academia for my taste. Right. Now, the consensus seems to be that that number is somewhere between 120 and 163. Now, 163, I actually saw the diagram of them doing it. Right. I would never park in a lot that had that. Gotcha. <laughs> because basically, it was angled parking, one-way roads, because that's why you have angled parking, is so everything's one way. Right. And it, it, yeah. it seemed like it'd be scary. Yeah. <clears throat> you might have that, you might be able to do that if you have like a... um. A valet lot or something. You have expert drivers right. that are comfortable with that. Yeah. That, that ain't me, bro. <laughs> no. And then you also have to account for oversized and undersized exactly. vehicles. Now, I, I think the best metric I found on this was the the largest parking lot, I think the like single surface parking lot. That one was, story. One story parking lot that was um, studied was the Pentagon. Okay. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The Pentagon gets 130 okay. per acre. <clears throat> so it seems like in practical scenarios with like human, not superhuman drivers, yeah. it skews to that 120 to 140 range. Maybe trickling up to 150, but in that in that ballpark. Right. <clears throat> but the problem is that space is expensive. It is. If you are in an urban area, yeah. it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> and if you're in a rural area, the land may not cost you money, but odds are it's not cleared or prepared. Right. It's not cleared or prepared. And also, if you're trying to expand and you don't have a lot of land, that's land that you can't expand into. Yeah. Yeah. And your parking area takes away from your structure and your building and your haunt. Right. And so that's a real, real problem for you guys. Right. Um, and most haunts do not charge revenue, and I don't think that would be a good idea to do so personally. Yeah. For I can list a lot. I can give you a laundry list of reasons if you want, but I think they're pretty self-explanatory. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good approach, and it's still a major expense. You've got to light it. You've got to staff it. You've got to clean it. You've got to. Right. You. It. This costs you money, but doesn't generate revenue, and it takes away land. Probably your most precious resource at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, And because of that, I'm going to be honest, haunts, at least in our area, skimp on parking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> they they really do. And, I, uh, and the truth of the matter is, I think almost every haunt I've been to in this region has, has woefully inadequate parking. I would agree with that. Um, House of Shock... <laughs> They have only street parking in a warehouse district area. Right. And it is a mess where the customers are ba- basically making up the rules. Yeah. There's They're very little signage. Up, yeah. yeah. There's there's no signage. You, you drive in and you basically pick a road and park yeah. on the side of it. We have come out and people in cars near us have had their cars broken into because yeah. there's no security. It's not well lit. Yeah, and they have um, these big signs say it's patrolled area. And maybe it is, but yeah, break-ins are legion, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, they've they've had problems with Now, that. I have a great defense against break-ins, by the way. I drive a crappy car. 
<laughs> Not only that, but we don't clean it out before we go. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, they don't take one peek in there and go, oh my god, it's a Kia with soda cups all over the back. Yeah. Exactly. Hell no. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing in there for us. No matter that, it's not even worth looking at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a real but that's a real problem. Now mortuary which is one of the ones you know that doesn't have any place to expand to. They only have street parking right. in a residential slash commercial area. Now, I think the parking is safer, but it's also harder to find. Right. Every time we go to the mortuary, and we go typically on not very busy nights. Correct. But typically, they're like opening weekend because they're the first ones to open. Even then, we still struggle to find parking sometimes. Yeah. And so, that it's just not enough spaces nearby. And like I would say like a four-block radius. It's woefully inadequate. A lot of it is residential. Yeah. Now, the mortuary does offer valet parking. Yes. So they do have that. Yeah. If you don't want to worry with it. But that's going to be an extra cost to the customer. Yeah, and that's, uh, once again, an extra and that's expense. that's not something that a lot of customers are going to pay. Honestly. Yeah, and honestly, and then the other thing about it, I think that is woefully under-advertised because I did not know. Yeah. I thought I remembered seeing a valet um, as we exited. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was useful. Glad we learned it. Yeah, learned so it I just looked it up and, and made sure. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So they, they did combat that a little bit. Um, the Fright Trail in Lafayette, they have you park <laughs> across a very, very busy street. Yeah. The, the lot is big. It's adequate. It feels adequately safe. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially considering there's like 80 billion you need cops around. Right. But Well, that's to make sure you cross the street safely. Yes. But... The problem with that is, of course, like you said, you have to cross this busy street. You have to wait for the cops to stop traffic and crossing guard you. Right. To the other side of the attraction. <clears throat> it's just, it's, it's a major thing. And it was actually one of the major challenges. We talked about the Hell's Gate thing when we had Japes on. Yes. It was actually one of the major complaints about Hell's Gate. Because Hell's Gate took the solution of having, they, they contracted with um, the basically the public transit system right. there locally and use their lot their after hours lot right for haunt parking and we're going to shuttle people so now they've got adequately lit very safe patrolled lot right that's all good but then getting to the haunt which is about a, i think it was like a half a mile away or something or a mile away even yeah it, it was, was some a, distance away yeah. it was too far to walk comfortably um they had inadequate shuttles yeah and so that's another problem there so once again good solution um, just kind of didn't work out that time. Now, I will right. say this. A couple that I do think had pretty adequate parking in our area. Uh, 13th Gate. No not fault of their, their own. own. <laughs> they did everything they could to not have adequate parking. Yeah. <laughs> but A, they are abounded by a casino parking garage. Yeah. Which has not gotten wise to the fact 13th Gate goers park there. Or just don't care. I don't know which it is. Yeah, because on special event nights they at charge, the casino, yeah. they charge $5, mm -hmm. which is not bad for all night. I would still do it in that case. Yeah, we did. We've done that a couple of times. But, um, but yeah, 13th Gate itself, I'm not sure where you're supposed to park for them. They have that parking lot under I-10. Right, which we did the very first year we were yeah. there. And I'm just going to say this. That is scary. I mean, yeah. I'm a haunter. That lot scares me. Um, okay. Actually, they they say that they do not own any parking lots and have no control over operation securities or fees for it. Yeah. So they don't have anything yeah. that's, that is owned by them. Yeah. they have, The lot under I-10 is a city lot, if I remember correctly. I think it's just a place where people park. I don't know that it's an actual lot. I may be stretching the term by using the word lot. Here. Yeah, I think it's some land that people thought, oh, I could put a car here. Yes, but once again, they are fortuitous enough to have that casino parking garage literally adjacent to them. Right. <clears throat> and it's a very, very big garage, like eight stories. Yeah, we've and never had a problem. Finding. Never, We've never had to park above like, the third floor in that, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, they got lucky. And Rise also has adequate space for parking. It's a yeah. little confusing. But the lot itself is well lit. It's well maintained. It's right. clean. It seems to be fairly safe. Yeah. It, and honestly, the fact that I even thought of Rise as being like a good parking example yeah. says how far we've fallen. Because it's not that it's bad. It's just it's traditional event parking in a field and bounded by string. It's... Yeah, it's it's bounded by string. I do think that that they have gravel, um, yeah, it's, it's a, to keep 
it from getting, you know... It's improved spaces, but still, it's not in any way, like, magical, right? Yeah. So, as we get into this season of park, of thinking about where you're going to move and how you're going to operate, here's five questions to think about with parking. All right. One, do you have enough spaces? Nope. <clears throat> Go back to that you know, 120 to 163 per acre rule. Do the math. Remember that customers usually come in groups of two to four. Um, it's going to be different for each haunt. In our experience, it's typically about three people per car. Right. But the, every haunt is going to have a different experience here. So you can probably guess how long someone's going to be on there, how many people you're estimating, or how many people you need per night, basically. Right. And then guesstimate how many spaces you need upon that. And then I would add a little cushion, you know, because you want that. Better to have too much than too few. But yeah, take some time. Estimate, do you have enough spaces? If you don't, where can you get more? Can you improve more land? Can you strike a deal with a neighboring property? Right. Like, I know, like, uh, this isn't a haunt. It's a, it's, it's a club. Tipitina's here in New Orleans is a big music club. They have no parking. No. Zero. Zip, zilch, nada, Tanegabuska. They got nothing. <laughs> they are in a warehouse district. They have zero parking spaces. And they're in an area with effectively zero street parking. Yeah. So what they did is they scored, they struck a deal with Win Dixie across the road. Yeah. And Win Dixie basically lets them use the backside of their lot. Hmm. Which is, that's, that's an option. Right. Um,. Are the spaces adequate in, quali in quality? Um, will they get muddy if it rains? No. <clears throat> will people get stuck in them? Can you get trapped in these spaces? Um, how is the terrain for walking, too? Think about that. People got to get out of their cars and walk. Right. Is the terrain adequate for that? We have tripped and fallen in parking lots and haunts before. Yeah, well, and, and this wasn't on a haunt, but at the uh, Blue Bayou in mm. Baton Rouge when I took Sean there for a concert. Yeah. Um, their parking was just horrendous. And he had on these new Harley Quinn shoes. Oh, they were so cool. They were nice yes. kicks. Uh, yeah. And he had just gotten them that day from his grandma for something. And whenever we got back to the car, they were completely muddy mess. Yeah. Because <laughs> step out and you sunk into the mud. Yeah. Basically. So. Yeah. How well is the traffic flow organized? Yeah. Um, that was a big failing at the craft show, Jesus. as in it was not organized yeah. at all. And do you have or need attendance? Right. Rise, for example, does not have attendance. I don't think they really need them. No. That I've seen. No. Then again, I've not been there on their busiest nights. Right. Because those nights were open. Yeah. But... Yeah, long and short of it is, do you need attendance? Now, a good example of a place that needs attendance and uses them is RenFest here. Right. Yes, RenFest does, and they are very good at directing traffic. Yes. You, you cannot go 200 feet in RenFest parking without running over an attendant. Right. Now, much. this last time, parking was rough, but that was because there were so many people. Yeah. Um, the other thing you need to make sure is if you have attendants, make sure people can recognize them as attendants. Yes. Don't just have, like, some random dude. Yeah. Well, that's what Blue Bayou had, was some random drunk guy in the middle of the, the aisle trying to direct traffic. I was not sure he was there as an employee. He might have just been like a good Samaritan. I'm doing the airport yeah, thing exactly. again. Good Samaritan. Yeah, I was. The, I'm still not sure. <laughs> you know. Here's the thing: go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's. Those reflective vests exactly. are like two dollars each. They're pretty much yeah. nothing. Just just buy a bunch of those to give them out to anyone in the parking lot. Yeah. A safety. B official status. It's it's a big right. deal, and may want to invest in wands and other things too. Because it yeah. will be dark, dark when you're doing this, right. but still. So yeah, a good thought, a good thing to think about there. Um, <clears throat> is the lot, is your parking safe? Yeah. How well lit is this lot? Um, yeah. Is it patrolled or attended? Mm -hmm. And do the customers feel safe? Right. And, uh, and the other thing is, is that if you do have a field where people are parking, make sure that there's not litter that's going to puncture tires. Yes. Because I've, I've, had it, yes. That, I've had that issue before. Yes. Um, and here's the thing about safety that I, I want to drive home. How safe it feels is literally the most important part about this. Yeah. It doesn't really matter how safe it actually is. Right. If it feels safe, 
people will park there. Remember that a car for most people is the second most valuable thing they own. Yeah. And it is the most important thing in their life in many ways. The most important physical object. It's what gets them to work. It's what gets them what carries their right. family. It is literally like the most important movable object in their lives. Yep. Think about that and remember that they don't feel safe leaving their car. They're probably not. Yep. There's a good chance they won't. So, yeah, and that's one of those things, like, like why, and th- this is one of those things where I, I think, like, perception oftentimes hinges upon where you are, like, geographically. Like, Rise feels safe because it's so rural, it's uh, out there right. in the woods, and meanwhile, like, you know, if I parked in a similar field outside the house of shock, yeah. I would feel significantly less safe. Right. So, food for thought there. And how far is it to the haunt? Yeah. And the way I would look at that is look at the furthest space away. How far do they have to walk to the haunt? How long is it time-wise? How long is it feet-wise? Is it a comfortable, safe walk, etc.? Right, like that walk um, that we did at the Mississippi haunt, the one on the river. Yeah. Uh, um, on, terror on the coast. Terror on the coast, on yeah. the coast, yeah. I knew it was a body of water. Uh, yeah, because they had us park a long ways away, mm-hmm. and we walked... All the way up there, and we're immediately <laughs> besotted by the wonderful smell of Bortolets. Of Bortolets outside. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, <laughs> and then on the way out, we had to walk, what, half a mile? Well, at least it was over a quarter of a mile. Over a quarter of a mile to get from the In exit Dark of the haunt to, back to the cars with nothing happening. Yeah. And no one guiding you, no real. Yeah. No, no, no one telling you where to go. No scares or anything taking advantage of the ambiance. No, right. nothing happening. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, yeah, that was that was really frustrating. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this though: here on the coast, they had attendants in the lot area telling right. you where to park. They were giving you good guidance. Yeah. The lot felt safe. It was that part, even though it wasn't well lit. Right. It still seemed reasonable to park there. Yeah. It's just then you get out and it's like, okay, where's the haunt? Right. <laughs> Oh, Which it's way, it? way, way, way down there. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a little bit kooky. Um, you know, do you need shuttles? Is shuttles something you should be considering? Right. And if so, how many shuttles do you need? Yeah. Did you sell a whole bunch of Groupons for one night only? And and then... I have only one shuttle? Yeah. Yeah, something... To, and here's the thing. I think a lot of... Like, I think Terra on the Coast actually could have benefited from a shuttle. Yeah, possibly. I think they could have. And I think... Or at least a golf cart at the end or something. Something, yeah. And and I I say that because I remember what Waterloo Sportsman Club did Mm -hmm. at the end, where you went on that little hayride. They called it a hayride, but realistically it was a shuttle from the end of the haunt back to your car. Right. Or back to the festival area where you parked. Yeah, because nothing really happened during it. You were just uh, on a ride. And actually, I just remembered, Waterloo actually was a really good parking situation. Yeah. They are a sportsman club. They're used to having big events. They had a very big, very nice, well-organized gravel parking lot, well lit. Yep. Right next to the festival area, so it was well attended. Yep. There were a lot of people there. Yeah, I didn't think twice about leaving my car there. Yeah. No, not not even a, a heartbeat of hesitation there. No. And like I said, a nice little hayride to take you back to it after the haunt was over. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe that's a good example to use. I didn't, maybe I should put that one in earlier. Yeah. Look at me remembering stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> and final question though, what about handicapped slash and or disabled customers, depending on the language you want to use? Yeah. I'm always unsure of that. Do you have handicapped parking? And if you do, how are they getting to the haunt? Yeah. Because, like, I don't think anyone in a wheelchair is getting into Rise from that parking lot easily. No, not easily. They, they probably can do it, but it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure how you would navigate. They, they would have to have a separate entrance. Yeah. Because to navigate the line, even. Yeah. Would, would be, be difficult. difficult. Yeah. But still, it's something to think about, especially with ADA issues and so forth. Right. This is something to definitely consider. Yeah. And the reason to weigh all this in my book is parking is a first impression. Definitely. It is literally the first thing people do at your haunt. Right. 
I, I drive a time, and the first thing I do after I arrive at your haunt is I park my car. Yep. It is good, and this is often done after a long drive. You know, people might might have driven an hour or two hours to go attend your haunt. Yeah, sometimes more. Sometimes more, <laughs> and they might be a little cranky, especially if they got a little lost on the way. Yeah. And so think about that. Think about how you can you know, ease that tension and bring them back into the mindset of having fun. You know, you make the experience good. You get them parked, you get them out of their cars, you get them toward the haunt where they're going to spend money. Right. You want that mood good. So they feel good about giving money and they buy stuff and they do stuff and they, they you know what I mean? Yeah. You make You make more money off customers that are happy and having fun. Definitely. Customers that are scared before they even get into the haunt, hey, they're harder to scare. Yeah. Monster jumps on. I'm, I, I, I was in your parking lot, man. You don't have anything on that. <laughs> <coughs> totally see that in some of these haunts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. You need customers to be in the mindset to spend money, and they're not going to be that way if they're worried about their cars or if they were frustrated trying to find a spot. Right. If they've already got something to be focused on other than having fun going through a haunted house. Because and this is a weird thing humans do. We all do this to some degree. We have in our minds a, an amount of what we are willing to give for an experience. Right. And that what we're giving is an that's like the sum total of money, aggravation, for time, yeah. all this stuff in like a big pile of how much we're willing to give. We all add that to the cost. Right. As a haunt, we want them to pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But we don't want them to be paying in a lot of the other stuff. Right. We don't want to be wasting their time and raising their time costs. We don't want to be raising their aggravation costs. We want all the costs from them to be in the form of cash we can spend paying bills, living, eating, and keeping the business going. Right. So that's one of the reasons why parking has to not suck. Yeah. Um, and unfortunate. And the other thing about it is it all it does make customers more comfortable at coming back. Yeah. If you have a really rock and haunt. But a terrible parking situation, there's always going to be a caveat when people debate whether or not they want to come back. Right. You've added an extra expense to your haunt, basically. Yeah, you have. And like I said, you want to make that expense the foldable kind. Right. <clears throat> now, sadly, parking can't always be fixed. Mortuary, one we've talked about repeatedly the show, has absolutely no goddamn where to grow. Yeah. They are bounded on all sides by cemetery and street. They have nothing they can do. They do valet parking, as you said, mm -hmm. and they do provide um, suggestions on where to park on their website. Right. And on social media, too. They tell people where to go and where to look. Um, so that is something to definitely consider. If you can't fix your parking situation, give the customer as much guidance as you can. Tell them where they can go, what to expect. And say, hey, there's a garage right behind us. It's five bucks for overnight stay, you know. You should definitely go there. We don't control it. We don't own it. But it's the most convenient place. You know, or there's on-street parking typically on these streets here. Yeah. You know. Say what you can to help your customer make the situation less frustrating for them. Right. Basically. Exactly. Help the customers help themselves. Yeah. <clears throat> And also, one idea I wanted to raise as we were wrapping this episode up, um, we talk a lot about VIP experiences on this podcast. Yep. Sort of a, a necessary evil in some ways in this industry. Yeah. But what about the idea, I mean, we know the mortuary does some of this. But no, what, it doesn't. Oh. Oh. It yes. Do, it does? Yes, I just read it. Okay. Okay. So you were, uh, we were right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but what about making it part of a VIP package? Right. Now, Mortuary offers a special valet package. Now, this was for their 10th anniversary. I don't know if it was for um, all the other years. But it, free valet parking was included with VIP tickets on Fridays and Saturday nights. Okay. Wouldn't that have helped us? Because we're nope. on a Thursday. Yep. But still, point remains. Um, I, I kind of like this idea because, especially if you control the lot, right, and you can set aside certain spaces, yeah, for VIP tickets, VIP ticket holders. All that costs you is someone there in the lot who's probably already also going to be helping doing the. Well, yeah, they have to have be licensed to be able to drive other people's cars. Well, okay, the, the permits. I'm, and I'm not talking about even like a valet in the situation. Okay. I'm talking about just having a special lot in oh, position okay. yeah. that people can use. 
Right. All you have to have is someone there to say, no, right. I'm sorry, so you need to park elsewhere over that way. Right, just a VIP parking area. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Even that could be helpful. Right. Because um, we already do VIP admissions. We do other VIP parts of the VIP experience. It seems like a natural extension of that to me. It does. It costs the haunt very, very little. Yeah. Um, like I said, they'll have to have someone out there to uh, filter and let the people into the VIP parking area. But it may be a way to really increase VIP um, ticket sales. Yeah. So just something to think about. It's a good there. point. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I, I kind of like that because I can see like Rise is the one I keep going back to because they have that huge long lot. It's a very right. oddly shaped lot. Yeah. Where it's like maybe like two rows wide. Yeah. But like <laughs> it's like a thousand feet long. Yeah. It seems it goes pretty much all the way from the road to the haunt and it's a pretty long stretch. Um but yeah, they could set aside like the 40 spaces nearest the door or whatever. Right. VIP parking. Yeah. And the plebes park. In the back. <laughs> or the back. Yeah, so, get to walk more. Exactly. And it, it's still not a huge walk in that case. No. The only way it's going to be a huge walk is if you get that spot way back at the back. Well, and the only problem with that, mm -hmm. with doing that at Rise, is that they would have to take the ticket as you come in. Right. Or at least see your ticket or something. You'd have to have a printed right. ticket. You'd have to to buy online ahead yeah. of time. Yes, which is which would encourage that. Which is something we should be encouraging as an industry for a lot of reasons we've discussed previously, but we don't do a lot of. Right. And it's very frightening. In fact, we actively punish people who buy online ahead of time. Right. And that really aggravates me. But and yeah, more on that, I guess. So in previous episodes, future episodes, and all the episodes. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> well, we will be talking about that way more. But yeah, I mean, I just wanted to get this conversation about haunted attraction parking going. Yeah. Because we as an, this is one of those things that we as an industry broadly suck at. <laughs> yeah. We're not very good at it, at least That's in fair. our region. And we need to get better at it because it's part of the customer experience. It's the first impression. And, yeah, it, like I said, I, I've noticed in places that have crap parking, yeah. I spend less money. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure other studies will back me up on that. Yeah. If you frustrate people literally out of the gate. <laughs> right. Well, not only if you frustrate them, but if you have unsafe lots or that feel unsafe people are going to want to hurry get through it and get back to their car yeah they're not going to want to stay at your concession so you're you know not going to do that second or third booth. attraction yeah yeah it, yeah so be thinking about this guys especially now in this time of year when many of us are looking for locations try to find locations with adequate parking that you can work with and use and hopefully it'll make your customers feel safe yeah, or just a way to improve what you already have. If you've got the space, by all means, now's a great time. Or strike deals with your neighbors is another possibility. Yeah. It can it can and does work. In fact, the original Chamber of Horrors did that with the machine shop next door. Oh. Uh, they struck yeah. a deal with them. Because remember, Chambers did not own the lot you parked on. Hmm. I did not realize that. I, I knew that it was a very small, small tiny lot for Yeah, but they, they did not actually own it. Hmm. Um, and in fact, actually, they well, they own the lot we as actors parked in because we parked right. basically up against the building. Yeah. But the actors that were the customers parked was actually owned by a uh, warehouse slash machine shop next door. Oh, that's okay. So just an interesting trivia. Yeah. Anyways, that's all I've got on this subject. I wanted to get the conversation going. Maybe we can have some talks about it. Once again, we are Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. Drop us some comments. What do you think about parking? How much does it suck at the haunts you go to? Does it right. suck at the haunts you go to? How does your haunt deal with parking? Just answer some, just get just some questions to think about. And I don't know, I've got nothing else on this topic. You? Nope. Well, on that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. And once again, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly, episode 53. All about the wild, wild, super exciting, action-packed world of parking. We will see you guys next time. We'll probably be talking about Krampus now. See you then.